Hello there, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. This is a paid request for Douglas. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Flight of the Intruder, a 1991 film, which was one of the last films directed by John Milius. I don't think it's the last one he directed, but it's one of the last ones. Now, of course, John Milius... For those who don't know, he directed the original Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You also have Red Dawn, the original Red Dawn with Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen. Uh, those are his two most prominent films he directed. Very solid movies. And the movie itself is like trying to be a little bit of Top Gun, maybe a teeny bit of Platoon, very you know, a couple other films. That I read up an interview with John Millies. He said making this film was like the worst experience he ever had. Something about the studio kind of took control away. And like if he had his creative control, he could have made this film for a lot less. But the studio, I guess, tried to throw money at it. And John Millies is like, I could make this film for so much less. And what are you guys doing? Uh, I don't know all the other details. Because there's not a whole lot of making material on this movie. I don't know if this is true, but I read that the ending was... It ended at one thing, and then they added uh, an additional ending to it. I mean, this is complete rumor and conjecture. So I, I don't know for certain. Now, the film itself... It stars Brad Johnson, which I reckon he's been in a couple films. I think the Philadelphia Experiment 2, among others. I know Sally, he passed away a few years ago, actually, from the C to the O to the VID. At least that's the way they say. You also have Danny Glover, who I love, in films like Predator 2 and the Lethal Weapon movies, among other films. Willem Dafoe, speaking of Platoon, Willem Dafoe is in this. You also have supporting roles from Tom Sizemore, may he rest in peace, Veen Rames. Even have like a brief one scene role with David Schremer. Uh, Rosanna Arquette has a very small role. At least the movie just comes off as a very lackluster version of Top Gun mixed with Vietnam movie. And while there's a couple decent aerial sequences, I think the story is very meh. I think the characters, for the most part, are pretty blasé and not that engaging. And it just comes off as one of those films you watch and it's not like an outright terrible movie, but you find it a bit forgettable. I mean, I would even put Navy Seals above this. And Navy Seals not, may not be a great movie, but I did. I would rather put Navy Seals above this. It's definitely the compared to Conan and Red Dawn, it does feel like a step down for John Milius. I mean, hell, you just go watch Iron Eagle and, and various other movies. I mean, would I watch Firebirds over this? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to make it sound that bad, but it's just, it's not that memorable. I mean, when I get into it, it's a, Brad Johnson is flying the A-6 bomber. They like said it's during Vietnam. They're doing these missions. I seem like there's not much point. Like, they get this intelligence, but they drop these bombs at night, and it's just like a bunch of trees. And during the flyback, his buddy gets shot in the neck and dies while they're going back. And that affects Brad Johnson quite a bit. Danny Glover is the commanding officer and just being an outright dick and prick for really no reason. I mean, there's a bit where... 
he literally ha still has blood of his buddy on him, and Danny Glover's like going on about you need to put this behind you. I'm like, it just happened. And trying to talk to him, and then Brad Johnson goes, I'm sorry. And Danny Glover literally goes, for what? If you die, son, I'll piss on your grave. I'm saying, go, why? Why do you want to pee on his grave? Like, Danny Glover's not in the film as much as you would think based on the poster. It's definitely more Brad Johnson and even a bit more Willem Dafoe's movie. Danny Glover appears every once in a while until the the third act. And I love Danny Glover. Don't get me wrong. I love Danny Glover. I do. I mean, Predator 2 is one of my all-time favorites. The Lethal Weapon film, especially the first three, I, I like. Even, you know, goofy films like Gone Fishing I enjoy. But... I think it's not his performance, it's maybe just the way he's directed, or just his character. His character is just so unlikable, and not that interesting, and like I say, he appears few and far in between, that when he gets shot down the third act, I'm like, I don't care. Like, a Danny Glover film, or a film he was in that dealt with Vietnam, that was better, I thought was Bat-21. Bat 21, I, I easily enjoyed much more than this. With him and Gene Hackman, where Gene Hackman's behind enemy lines, and Danny Glover, he's going back and forth in a helicopter trying to f get in touch with them and trying to help them, trying to save them, find out where he's at. And sometimes the tone of it is a bit weird. Because it's trying to have some pretty serious moments, but at the same time, after all that I described, which is pretty serious, his buddy dying from a gunshot in the neck, and like they still haven't cleaned the blood out of the plane yet. Then they're having a meeting where someone's taking a dump in the ashtrays, and Danny Glover says a line, Well, someone in this room is the phantom shitter. I'm like, the phantom what? Spitter? No, not spitter. Hitter? No, not hitter. The shit. What? The phantom what? <laughs> Sheet. Phantom sh The phantom sh shitter. And nothing really comes of that, really. Is that what, I mean, it's just a weird thing to put in there. So one thing leads to another, and Tom Sizemore and two others get with Brad Johnson. The four of them are going to go have some R&R. Willem Dafoe, who is on his like third term, he joins them. So there's five of them. He doesn't talk much at first. And there's a point where they get into a bar fight. And Willem Dafoe, they notice he's a cool guy because he's covering for them. And Willem Dafoe, I would say, is the only character I had any amount of interest in. Because he doesn't have a whole lot to work with. But just like the unique way Willem Dafoe looks, and the, the mustache, and also he's such a great actor, Willem Dafoe. Various movies he's been in. And he has a bit of quirkiness to him. Like when he first arrives, he's like, wait, wait, wait. It's been a while since I've been here. Just want to smell the sea. All right. I'm reminded of it again. Or about how he's really gun ho about the fight. He's like, because Brad Johnson asks, well, how, why would someone come here three times? I love the fight. I like to fight. Or there's a bit where they do something later on and Brad Johnson is trying to apologize. I'm sorry I got you into it. And Defoe goes, no. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. You never broke the faith, amigo. 
Like I said, with the little kernel of stuff he's given, Willem Dafoe is trying to make chicken salad out of chicken spit. <laughs> he really, he's really trying. I'm, I talked about Danny Glover. Love him as an actor, but he was just an unlikable character. And I did a lot of those movies supposed to be like the commander's a hard ass. But, I don't know, it just... There's got to be a bit more something to it. And I, I don't know. Just. It didn't. It seemed like it didn't come from any reason. Or any. Like okay if it was like the lead guy is messing up. Or he's. Screwing around. And so as a command officer. You have to hone in on that. And say hey you can't be screwing around. You can't be goofing off. You know this stuff is serious. It's not the case in this quite the opposite so it just made him seem like you're treating this guy as a like a prick for no reason and then brad johnson i'm sorry that the guy passed away i don't think he's that great of an actor he comes off as a lesser version of tom berenger like, uh, he's not Tom Berenger, he's the cheap knock off him that you get that costs a couple bucks less. You know, you don't get Mountain Dew, you get uh, Dew Mountain. <laughs> if you, you don't get Pepsi, you just get the cola. S you know, Tim's Cola that costs you a dollar. He's the discount. Discount Tom Berenger. If you can't get Tom Berenger, I guess we'll get this guy. And it's like, oh, well, we can't get, we got Willem Dafoe, who was in Platoon. Who else was in Platoon? Tom Berenger? Well, we can't get Tom Berenger. So, do we have someone that kind of looks like Tom Berenger? Sure, get Brad Johnson. He just didn't do much for me. I just didn't think he had the great amount of charisma. I don't think he's a fantastic actor. He's not the worst actor I've seen far, far from it. But, and yeah, I just kept thinking, man, they could not get Tom Berenger, so they got this guy. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, I would prefer to have Tom Sizemore. Like Tom Sizemore or Vien Rames or like I'm seeing the, some of these other people in here. Or even Willem Dafoe. Like I would have preferred some of these other people to be uh, be switched around. <clears throat> That's just me though. And also there's certain bits that I think they could have cut out and would not have changed anything like they bring up this love bit of a story with Roseanne Arquette because while during R&R &R, you're supposed to go see the lady the wife of the guy who died on the in the plane with him <clears throat> but she's moved on and Roseanne Arquette helped her move out and they have like a couple scenes. They have like a scene where they meet, a scene after the bar fight in a coffee shop. They have like maybe a dance scene and maybe they hang out on a beach. And then she like disappears. Like when they get like halfway through, she disappears and you never really see her again. And then you're sitting there going, well, what was the point of having this love story in there in the first place? It's like, well, we gotta have a love story. But maybe John Millions or someone said, well, I don't really want a love story. But you need a love story. But I don't want one. Well, you don't get one. Okay, fine, I'll give you one. But it's only going to last for like seven minutes. And then I'm going to get to the rest of my story. But anyway, it seems like this, the plot kind of wanders. And it tastes like halfway through the film before it finally wanders back to what the focus of it is. Just like in the little love story, Rosanna Arquette went nowhere added nothing to it. You could have completely cut that out. I do remember seeing this movie before and there were two scenes I remembered. And because they're the two highlights of this movie. One is after a few other bits here with some decent aerial combat scenes. Brad Johnson has a plan to go in and bomb Hanoi. 
And at first, one Defoe says you're crazy, but ultimately he agrees to it. And they go in, and it's like they're, it's nighttime, and they take out a power plant, and they're going in Hanoi. And for 1991, it looked decent enough. Where you see like the plane, you see that model work of a plane. And maybe like model work or part of a city. Some people say it reminds me of Godzilla with the miniatures. Which I mean maybe that's true in some shots. But I, I still appreciate the more practical approach. But they go in almost as if it's the run in Star Wars. The Death Star run. But they go in and the missiles don't work so they gotta circle back and go in again and they drop the bombs. And then things seem to be fine. They get in trouble, they get a court martial, and then they're told, well actually the president wants us to do things like this, so you're no longer in court martial. But Danny Glover's pissed at yes, yeah, so you're grounded. So that Danny Glover and the men go in to follow the president's orders. Danny Glover gets shot down, and this is the other scene I remember. Him being shot down, Willem Dafoe and Brad Johns have to go in to get him. Uh, they drop a bomb on a tank, they, cra they eject from the plane, they get separated. Spoilers, sorry, I'm spoiler alert. Heavy, heavy spoilers. The separated, Brad Johnson gets to Danny Glover, Willem Dafoe is trying to get there, but he gets wounded, but he kills the guy. He knows he don't bleed out. Pops the smoke. So he doesn't do the platoon. But kind of almost just lying down smoking a cigarette. They bomb the place. Do a sweep. Brad Johnson carries Danny Glover. They get to the chopper. Brad Johnson kills a bad guy who's ready to kill Danny Glover. Supposed to be this suspense scene where you see Brad Johnson shooting with two guns, but you don't see him kill the guy. It's supposed to be some suspense scene of, oh, it, who's coming? Is he coming? Is someone else coming? But anyone who watches this film is not going to think that, oh my god, there's a Vietnamese guy and he killed Brad Johnson. He's trying to kill Danny Glover. No, no one's ever thinking that, so it doesn't really work. It doesn't really pan out. And so the reveal just seems anticlimactic. They go back... Everything's fine, and then the movie's over. Now, again, uh, they there's some decent aerial combat scenes, but at the same time, you can find a lot more of that in Iron Eagle, in Top Gun. Hell, even in Firebirds, they're seeing more to that than this movie. So there, there's a lot more different variety, hell, I mean, Blue Thunder with his helicopter combat sequences. There's other films you can watch for that, which have more, uh, and I think they look a bit better in those as well, and they seem a bit more frequent. Like I said, Willem Dafoe, he has some quirks to his character, but you don't really get to know a whole lot about his character. Brad Johnson, like I said, he's a pretty bland lead. Danny Glover pops in every once in a while, and he's just very uptight prick. That you, you don't really get why he's acting this way at, at times. <clears throat> even the musical score at times, like he's trying to be patriotic, but it, even that comes off as a bit forgettable. You know, some of these type of movies would have more songs to the soundtrack, like Top Gun, Iron Eagle does. This does not. And, again, the score, I couldn't even tell you pieces of the score. Like, that I can't remember off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm not making this to try to sound like it's the worst film ever. But just in terms of action, or in terms of spectacle, or in terms of wannabe Top Gun, or Vietnam, it, it just there's so many other options that I think better suit what you're looking for in a picture like this. 
you know, other than curiosity because of the cast or because of the director, John Milius, it just doesn't offer a whole lot. Tom Sizemore, uh, it's nice to see him in there. You know, him being playful with all the hookers when they go up uh, for the R&R, &R, the beginning of R&R. &R. He has a couple little bits and pieces with the with Brad Johnson's character. And then, spoiler, before the Hanoi run, they're on a mission, and Brad Johnson's in one plane, Tom Sizemore's another plane, his plane gets hit, blows up. There you go. I mean, even Air America with Mel Gibson, which I don't love, I would even give more credit to that film compared to this. So it's just, I just see why this film is fairly forgotten. I just see why the film, no one really talks about it. Because it's just a bit of a forgettable affair. Fairly forgettable. I mean, compared to the films I mentioned, yeah, that's just me though. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye for now.